In the realm of classic cinema, few titles resonate as enduringly as the 1979 film Moonraker. Whether it marked your cinematic initiation or became a timeless emblem of the industry, the question lingers. When was the first time you witnessed the spectacle of Moonraker unfold on screen? What enduring qualities render this film an everlasting symbol of cinematic prowess? Now, let's delve into the fascinating facets that contribute to Moonraker's cinematic legacy. Did you know that behind the scenes, the production team faced unexpected challenges that ultimately shaped the movie's unique character? These random facts offer a glimpse into the intricate tapestry of Moonraker's creation. Amidst the narrative twists and turns, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience tied to this cinematic gem? We invite you to share your stories and memories in the comments below, as the magic of Moonraker has left an indelible mark on countless viewers. Crafted with timeless appeal, Moonraker transcends its era, leaving an enduring imprint on the cinematic landscape. Explore the depths of this classic and share your experiences. Your stories are the heartbeats that echo through the corridors of cinematic history. Moonraker, a 1979 film, is the 11th installment in the iconic James Bond franchise. The movie, directed by Lewis Gilbert, takes Agent 07, portrayed by Roger Moore, on a thrilling mission to investigate the mysterious disappearance of a space shuttle. As Bond delves deeper into the enigma, he uncovers a plot involving a megalomaniacal industrialist, Hugo Drax, aiming to reshape humanity through a space-borne toxin. The narrative unfolds with a typical Bond flair, blending espionage, action, and romance against the backdrop of extravagant locations, including the Amazon rainforest and outer space. The film's space-centric theme reflected the era's fascination with space exploration, tapping into the zeitgeist of the late 70s. Noteworthy characters include the charming yet suave Bond, the cunning and ambitious Drax, and the formidable Jaws, a towering henchman with metal teeth. Moonraker stands out for its larger-than-life set pieces, imaginative gadgets, and a departure from the franchise's usual grounded plots. Its impact on popular culture is evident in the continued reverence for Bond as a cultural icon and the enduring appeal of over-the-top espionage narratives. The film remains a testament to the Bond franchise's ability to adapt to contemporary themes and captivate audiences, transcending its time of origin. Richard Keel, renowned for his role as the towering henchman Jaws in Moonraker, holds a unique Bond record. He is the only henchman to appear in two Bond films. Keel's imposing presence and iconic metal teeth left a lasting impression on audiences. His character's popularity led to his return in the subsequent Bond film, solidifying Jaws as a memorable antagonist in the franchise. Beyond the on-screen action, interesting trivia surrounds the term Moonraker. Originating from a Wiltshire folk story, it has dual meanings. Firstly, it refers to a moon sail, the highest sail of a ship. Secondly, in the local legend, smugglers use the term while pretending to rake water in a pond to catch the moon's reflection, symbolizing extreme ambition. This dual interpretation adds an intriguing layer to the movie, connecting it to both maritime imagery and themes of ambition reflected in characters like Bond and the film's antagonist, Hugo Drax. Adding another layer to Moonraker's production, Tom Mankiewicz, a seasoned Bond scriptwriter, penned a script for the film that went unused. Surprisingly, sections of his work found their way into subsequent Bond films, such as Octopussy and A View to a Kill. Mankiewicz's influence extended beyond Moonraker, as he had previously contributed to scripts for Diamonds Are Forever, Live and Let Die, and The Man with the Golden Gun. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the intricate process of crafting a Bond film, with creative decisions influencing not only the featured movie, but also contributing to the broader Bond cinematic universe. Richard Keel's recurring role, the folklore-inspired term Moonraker, and Mankiewicz's script contributions collectively enriched the narrative tapestry of the 1979 Bond film. The production of Moonraker saw significant shifts in key creative elements. Notably, John Barry, renowned for his Bond scores, took a departure from his previous brass-heavy compositions. Instead, he embraced slow, rich string passages, a stylistic shift that marked a turning point in his musical output. This departure influenced not only Moonraker, but also resonated in later scores like Out of Africa and Somewhere in Time. Beyond its musical evolution, the film boasted the construction of the largest set ever built in France. This expansive set, a testament to the grand scale of Moonraker, played a crucial role in bringing the movie's ambitious and visually stunning scenes to life. 
The enormity of the set underscored the dedication to creating a cinematic experience that matched the high stakes of Bond's mission. Additionally, the journey to find the perfect theme song adds another layer to Moonraker's production history. Originally titled Think of Me, with music by John Barry and lyrics by Paul Williams, the song went through several iterations. After Frank Sinatra declined, the collaboration with Johnny Mathis proved unsuccessful. It was only after a chance meeting with Dame Shirley Bassey that the iconic Moonraker theme song found its voice, adding a touch of musical glamour to the film. In essence, Moonraker's 1979 release marked not only a milestone in the Bond franchise, but also a convergence of artistic choices that shaped its distinct identity. The musical departure, the grandeur of the set, and the journey to find the perfect theme collectively contribute to the rich tapestry of the film's production. In 1979, the decision to follow up on James Bond's adventures took an unexpected turn. Despite earlier promises of Bond's return in For Your Eyes Only, producer Albert R. Broccoli shifted gears, opting for the space-themed installment after the success of Star Wars, Episode Roman IV A New Hope. This strategic move set the stage for a unique Bond experience. Sir Roger Moore, portraying the iconic Agent 07, faced a rather unusual challenge during the filming in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Struggling with a kidney stone attack in France, Moore arrived a few days behind schedule. Despite the setback, he swiftly transitioned into character upon arrival, literally stepping off the plane into makeup and wardrobe, capturing the essence of James Bond in this out-of-this-world adventure. Remarkably, Moonraker breaks a notable Bond tradition. Unlike other films in the franchise, Bond doesn't take the wheel of a sleek car in this installment. Instead, he maneuvers a utility vehicle through caves, a departure from the classic Bond image. This deviation from the norm adds a distinct touch to the film, making it a standout among the Bond repertoire. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the unconventional choices that shaped the 1979 Bond experience, offering a fresh perspective on the production and the unique challenges faced by the cast and crew. The decision to veer away from traditional Bond tropes, coupled with unexpected filming hurdles, contributes to the distinctive identity of this cinematic venture. As we bid adieu to this cinematic journey through the cosmos, let the starlight of Moonraker linger in the corridors of your thoughts. Allow the echoes of daring escapades and heart-pounding moments to reverberate through your memories. Was it the spine-tingling suspense, the suave sophistication of Bond, or the breathtaking beauty of space that etched a constellation in your mind? Perhaps as you traverse the galaxies of reminiscence, you've stumbled upon a cherished moment a scene that danced with your imagination or a line that echoed in the recesses of your consciousness. Like a vintage wine, Moonraker only gets richer with time and your personal connection to it, a flavor unique to your own palate. Now, my fellow traveler through the cosmos of cinema, it's your turn to share. What constellations has Moonraker painted in your universe? Dive into the comments, let your words sparkle like stars in the vastness of our shared appreciation for this timeless classic. Bond aficionado or casual viewer, your thoughts are the gravitational pull that binds us in this orbit of cinematic delight. As the curtain falls on our voyage, I extend a heartfelt gratitude for your time and companionship. Your reflections are the stardust that enriches our collective experience. Until our paths cross again in the silver screen expanse, thank you for joining this celestial celebration of Moonraker, a testament to the enduring magic of storytelling. May your memories of Moonraker continue to twinkle in the tapestry of your cinematic adventures.